Hey everybody, so today I wanted to play around with and do a hands-on video with the two most popular coders that I've been playing around with. And then so to me these are these two coders are um, a definite step up from what we have had. Uh, and then so the two that I'm using are Magic Coder, uh, which is a 6.7B uh, model, and then Mixtral, uh, which is the 46.7B model that just came out. Uh, and then so both these models just came out within the past week or so. Uh, and then testing around with these models, they surpass, uh, I'd say, GPT 3.5 100% uh, all the way through, um, barred all the way through. Uh, GPT 4, like 90%. I, like, I, I mean, these things are clean. So I, I've used, I, I've, like, I've tested a lot of coding with LLM models and across the board. And then these are the first two where it's like, well, I've actually seen like something really <laughs> solid that I don't have to um, like. So uh, to me, it, it's like you know, before if you don't utilize uh, LLM models for coding and, and you don't look at it from like if you're just you know coding yourself, it's it's spending about like a, an hour on the coding and then like two minutes on the on like uh, debugging. And then whereas with like utilizing like, Bard or GPT, it's like the opposite, right? <laughs> it's like uh, two minutes on the coding and then an hour on debugging. Uh, and then this is the first uh, instance where I've seen where I'm not spending the hour debugging. I'm just like, I just run the code. <laughs> and so uh, I'll give you, I'll start off with the simple example. And, and I mean, this is far from a simple example, but so uh, this is a uh, magic coder. And then uh, this is the example that they give. Uh, and it, it's build a simple neural network in Python using PyTorch to classify handwritten documents from the MNIST data set. You should use CNN as the model structure, train the model for five epochs, draw a chart of the training loss, and show the final result. I like this prompt because it's, it's doing a lot here, right? Uh, and it's gonna take a bit to generate. Uh, and then so you can see here, we can pick the different languages. Uh, so uh, I've tested around with Python, uh, Java, uh, and HTML. HTML is totally fine. Uh, Java, there's a differentiation. Like I, I, I like I had a few issues with Java, so I, I but I'm not a Java expert personally. So um, like I, I, I'm not gonna. Show, I'll just showcase um, Python in this instance. So we'll do new notebook. Close this one out, and then let's put in our code here. And then so I'm gonna execute the code, and then I'll talk about the code because it's, it's gonna take a while to to run. One second. Terminate other sessions. There we go. So it's going to connect. I'm going to just run this in. And there's no. I don't think it'll. It's uh, if code is available. Uh, but uh, so I'm just going to run this straight from the CPU. So it's going to take a bit to train this model too, right? And then so that's the thing. But so uh, it's just torch, torch vision, uh, and then matplotlib, uh, and then matplotlib is uh, for like uh, what I asked for at the end there to uh, have it document the results of the training, uh, and then so uh, device torch. I should uh, it, so. Gen like I, I'm running this right now on CPU. I didn't connect to GPU, and then so the code here is fine because it's going to uh, connect to CPU if I don't have it connected to CUDA, which is fine. Um, and then this is the number of uh, hyperparameters. So, so it's saying run for five epochs, which is exactly what I said. Each epoch is batch size of 100. Uh, and then this is the max learning rate. And then we have the uh, um, data set to load from. And then so remember, I told I just told it to load the MNIST data set. And then so I like these test examples that they utilize and they they put on these sites like they're they they very specifically put this test example right so like this is the very specific test example that i've seen i've tried to run like a few variations on this like this particular data set and i haven't been able to get it to load data sets like and and actually put it into the code as good as it is here uh on this so i do want to highlight that up front and within this right that i have run back and forth tests and then so they are kind of gaming the test in my it, I, I don't know if they're gaming the test but this uh data set is like if you vary it like even like the imdb i went to like popular data sets it won't put it in the code directly just saying um and then so, like if, in my testing experiences uh and then so uh next is a convolutional neural network it's a two it's two layer network which is fine 
Uh, and then so it's just defining the layers, uh, the number of kernels, kernel size, like the kernel, uh, and then uh, kind of the structure of the layers, like how many parameters it's going to have overall, et cetera. Uh, and then it's got to, uh, uh, this one is only a forward layer. Um, so it's um, just a forward input there. Okay, and then, uh, 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 and then defining the two layers of the model. And then we have uh, the training steps for the model. Um, and then so it's just, and that's what it's going through right now. So this is a image classifier or image labeler. Um, and it's what, what it's, it's training on right now is uh, image labeling data. And then so we can see it, yeah, see it's going through. Uh, it's on training step three of five right now. Um, and then so <laughs> if you think I, I, I uh, I'm just going through kind of what, so what it's training on. And then so when it trains on, it does a forward pass and a backward pass. Uh, and then, so that's kind of uh, interesting and important thing to point out with this CNN and the way that uh, it's being set up here. Um, and then again, it's uh, five epochs of uh, 100 and it's 100 uh, data sets per epoch uh, or 100 rows. So it's running uh, essentially uh, going through the data 500 times. Uh, and then we can see each time that it's going through the different steps. Uh, right now it's on step three or five, and then it's about to go to step four or five. Uh, and then so super interesting uh, as far as uh, this. And then once this finishes running through, we'll have uh, what we asked for, uh, which was the matplotlib. Uh, and then uh, the um, very specifically, the chart of the training loss, and then to show the final result. Uh, and then so once it's done running these final steps here, four or five, it's going to generate that final result um, for us afterwards. Uh, and then I can highlight as well as it's going through those final steps, I went through this same exact uh, ask with Mixtral uh, and then um, uh, asked it to build a um, CNN network uh, and with these same instructions. And then Mixtral on this particular question gave pretty much the same exact responses as Magic Coder. So, uh, on this example that we're looking at here, Mixtral and Magic Coder were 100% like, were comparable um, and there was no distinguishment. Um, and then so that could be, again, because of the fact that uh, Magic Coder is like, this is like, the question that it's uh, meant for in this instance, because I haven't had it be able to replicate that specific or this specific uh, result within here. Uh, and then we've got just a few more training steps left here. Uh, it's uh, three. It's halfway through step five, uh, and then so it's uh, once it's done with step five, then it's going to complete the training, and then it's going to give us our loss result graph. And then it's interesting here too. I can highlight and show uh, that we can see the losses, the loss rate, uh, and the learning rate uh, as we're going through. Uh, and then so one thing that I noticed before, if it, yeah, it, so it, it's like the it, it kind of bottoms out like right around like here like like the same thing yeah like so um with this particular cnn and the way that it builds out uh, yeah <laughs> you can see this uh from like the epochs like, uh, like and, and from the learning graph right like it, it bottoms out like this is probably where we should stop the training and then something like it overfits the data like it gets stuck in like uh there but then it it, it comes back Overall, so like overall, we uh, end with a 98.98% uh, accuracy rate, which is really good overall. Um, but so like I think just point like I, this model could actually be like one of the next things that we could do is just try to train it with like lower epochs uh, and then see if that makes a difference uh, within this data set and then possibly, right? Uh, we'd have to test that out. Um, but so that's kind of what the next thing that I would do with this. But so now this is cool. Um, now let's go ahead and um, <laughs> like exit out of this notebook basically. So we'll do a new one. We're going to do a brand new test. Uh, and then uh, so it's probably going to cause those issues again. But that's why I'm running the CPU only because I'm not trying, like I don't want to run GPU uh, all the time for all these tests. Uh, and then uh, for this one, I, I have the, like, uh, so I can just run what I asked for the question here, um, and then already in Mixtral, and then I'll ask this same question to Magic Coder, uh, and then very straightforward question, which is, uh, build a simple machine learning classification algorithm in Python that can be trained on a data set that you have access to that is used for sentiment analysis. Uh, and then, so I'm assuming up front that it's going to come up with a naive base uh, algorithm, and then I, like, uh, I am curious what it will do for the training, the data sets, right? That's what I was kind of like 
also secondarily testing within this, uh, and then also giving it more of a broad uh, question to see what that the difference is there. Uh, and then, so the huge difference, I'll, I'll run through, like I haven't run this code yet um, from Mixtral, um, but I know what the result's gonna be on the metric coder side. So while that's going, we'll just start plugging in this Mixtral code real quick. And I'm just gonna plug it, uh, we'll see. And so what I did notice and highlighting from this mixtral is that we do have the data set, right? It did, it, it pulled from like the IMDB data set, which is what I was hoping it would, it would pull from. So uh, it like intuitively knew um, to like pull from that data set for what we're asking it in this specific instance. Uh, and then let's see what happens here. This should be fine. This should be fine. And then let's see it. Just run these all. And then while these are running, let's go ahead and pop back over to our metric coder. Uh, and then we'll take a look here. Uh, and then so what I want to show with the magic coder is it's uh, like almost the same. We have an execution failure, but so uh, it's, we have the uh, pip install uh, SK learn. Uh, and then uh, what we don't have oh, within this instance when it, uh, I, um, is yeah movie reviews .csv, so it's not actually pulling uh, a uh, it's making up a data set basically um, but it is doing a naive based classifier uh, document split into training uh, and then it's it's hallucinating the data set um, but let's see what our error is here Then NLTK is not defined, WNL, NLTK. Well, yeah, that makes sense because we don't have that anywhere else. So cool. So my uh, what I'm trying to do with these uh, test results is, like, I don't want to um, debug the code, right? I want to see if we, if we can run it with a uh, straight shot. Uh, and then so we'll go over, back over to our mix, our um, Magic coder, uh, and then we'll try the magic coder, and then so I do know that the magic coder instance, it, it like it's going to fail on that data set. So if we get any error besides that data set, that's good, right? If we get the error on the data set, that's expected, and then that's just going to be the data set error. Cool. Yeah, that's fine because I don't have moviereviews.csv, um, but we can like. Uh, I mean, it's not. It's going to be bad data, right? But we can do uh, this just to see if it won't. If it actually will execute. So I, I don't consider this debugging, right? Because I'm just putting in a different file name. Uh, there we go. Cool. And then, so this is what I wanted to see, right? I'm glad that I did this because it, it's airing like right after that. Uh, and then oh uh, okay uh it's key airing off of that which could be because of our our uh Yeah, I, I, uh, 
no, I think it's a debugging error. So uh, we'll consider this one a failure. Um, and then so this is cool. I, I want to do this as, as live examples within this, right? Um, and then so uh, the next one that I'll do is uh, they say build a console based Othello game in Java, but we're going to say uh, build an Othello game, build a text based Othello game in Python. Uh, and that should be good. And then we'll do this. And then we'll ask Mixtroll the same thing. We'll say, hey, make a text-based game. We'll clear it out just in case. Mixtroll is faster, so yeah. Keep it over here. <laughs> We're going to do a brand new environment again. Just because I, I don't know, I like it cleaner. Too many sessions there is because of that, which I expected. And so we'll just terminate all of them. And then we want to connect this one, which will take a second. And then while that's taking a second, let's uh, see what the error is. Oh, it's from the very bottom. And God syntax here at the very bottom. Uh, interesting. So, uh, but it's uh, I, I don't know Othello honestly. So um, we'll take a look, and then let's take a look at Star at the Magic Coder. Magic Coder's code is a little. It's totally different. Uh, so let's do this first. Just looking at that overall, I can see. Uh, so it's a lot longer. First of all, class board, uh, class Othello. Uh, and then it's actually got a bunch more definitions, and it's got an actual gameplay at the bottom. I noticed that, that like this isn't, I expected that this wouldn't execute. Um, but so, okay, cool. So the Magic Coder code in this instance looks a lot better. Um, and then let's see if it actually works. There we go. Um, so let's, I, I don't know how to play this. Uh, enter your move. I, I see four, is that valid? C4 is valid. Perfect. Okay, cool. So uh, there, and it's updating there, and I think I can press Q to quit. Yeah, cool. Um, and then so uh, there we go. So uh, loaded in, uh, and we're playing Othello. Uh, and then this is exactly what I want, and, and I was hoping for in this demo and this overview here uh, is so in this instance, Magic Coder, right? And this is Magic Coder 6.7 B is producing the the better output uh, on this example than the mixture example. Uh, and then I could go through uh, other examples here uh, of like uh, of code, but I think like we kind of we get the point, right? So I've done um, a, a CNN like like uh, machine learning. I've done oh I did the machine learning algorithm, uh, and then also like a, a Othello game in this particular instance. Uh, and then so uh, what we and again it was not going through and debugging, so we had. Uh, some successes and some failures, um, but just utilizing these two models, definitely, uh, I wouldn't, just coding it out, right? If I were to uh, just code out one of these, I'd still be on the CNN uh, from, uh, and wouldn't have all, any of these three. So uh, it's definitely saved time there. Um, and the just showcasing the power of these models and um, kind of how far they've come with this, right? Like, so I'm very happy with the results that we got out of this, especially like we we got the functional CNN and the functional Othello game, and I set the rules up front that we're not going to do any sort of debugging whatsoever uh, on the code, and it was able to generate it and, and get us results there. So, uh, really cool. I'll leave a description. I'll leave the link in the description for both Mixtral and Magic Coder in the chat. Uh, if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.